the fact that there were risks involved brought peace because I know that in the risk, God was going to come through, right? But it wasn't just the risk of like leaving. It wasn't just the risk of, um, you know, saying bye to our friends and family. It was the risk of, 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 am I even the right person to go? Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching ETV interviews here on the Encounter TV Network. My guest today, Michael Hernandez. Michael Hernandez is the pastor of Reclaim Church and the host of Reclaim Media. He and his wife, Jessica, reside in Hutto, Texas with their three children, Liam, Rylan, and Lucas, and one on the way. Pastor Michael has a heart to make disciples and help believers reach their divine destinies. Pastor Michael's testimony of radical faith is inspiring people of all generations. Pastor Michael, welcome to Encounter TV. Well, Great to have you on. Me on. So, for those who do not know, Pastor Michael Hernandez is actually my brother. And welcome to the broadcast. You and I have been working on something very special. Mm -hmm. We've launched a brand new YouTube channel called Reclaim Media. So let our viewers know who you are. Just give us a little bit of an introduction and then talk a little bit about this new channel that we've launched together. Well, obviously I've been, I've been working with the ministry for a long time. And something we've always talked about is, is being able to create content with the ministry. Mm -hmm. And so my heart has always been to uh, invest into people, to give whatever I feel like I've learned over the years in ministry and discipleship and find ways to practically give that out, give that information out, raise up leaders, really help people uh, get into their God-given destiny, that potential that they have. And so whatever I can give, I want to give that to invest in others. And that's really what Reclaim Media is all about. Now, you have a tremendous story, which we're going to be getting into in just a moment. And you're not going to want to miss this, especially if you sense that there's a call of God on your life. You're going to want to hear this testimony. It is a faith builder, so stick around for that. But, you know, we talk about Reclaim Media, and one of the things I really enjoy about the content that you're putting out is that it really complements the rest of the content from Encounter TV. You know, they come to Encounter TV, they get messages on the Holy Spirit, spiritual warfare, prayers, topics like that. You cover those topics yeah. too, but you're also helping to supplement. You talk about marriage. You talk about overcoming pornography addiction. You, you talk about some of the practical things in everyday yeah. life. And I really enjoy that perspective you take on media. You really do have a passion to build people and help them walk in their God-given destiny, yeah. don't you? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I've had to learn over the years, and I've had great people disciple me and teach me, um, you know, how to become a disciple. And even entering into ministry, um, before we became pastors, of how to be a leader, how to run ministry, how to help people, all that was, there's so much learning involved in that. And a lot of the learning was, you know, you'd watch videos and stuff, right? And, and you'd hear these amazing messages, and they're good stuff. But sometimes I would, I would watch those things and take away like, man, what do I do though? Like I get the point of what I should be doing, but how practically do I do those things? And even with things like marriage, with things like overcoming habits that are not healthy for you, um, how, how, do I, how do I do that? And I, I, I try my best to find practical ways to overcome struggles in marriage, to overcome um, addictions and habits, and but also obviously with a spiritual perspective on that, but with practical teachings. So not just inspiring them, but instructing them exactly. specifically exactly. in those areas. So the, the, I guess the goal is at the end of each video or at the end of each teaching, I want to I want to be able to say, okay, today you can go and do this. You know, you can go and make these changes right now. Now you mentioned that you are pastoring a church right now, and we're, yeah. that is part of the story that we're going to be talking about today. But right now you're pastoring in Hutto, Hutto Texas, Texas, yeah, and that's near Austin. Mm -hmm. How's that going? Man, it's been it's been so good lately. We've had a lot of visitors. We've had um, our 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 church members staying faithful, and we're seeing a, a genuine move of God. And it's not that we're just getting gathering a crowd, or it's not that we're just you know we're staying above no like above water, just floating through. No, we're we're encountering God every Sunday. It's it's incredible. Like. The, I've had visions of where our church would be eventually when we first moved there. And I, I remember praying and God would show me things. And I would say, man, that's good. I can't wait to get there in the next five to 10 years. But we're experiencing those visions right now. We've, we've seen people get saved. We've seen people get healed. We've seen marriages restored. It, and, and we are literally encountering the presence of God every single Sunday. It's, it's incredible. It really is. And that's, that's a beautiful, beautiful testimony, especially since there was some groundwork that had to be done first. Yeah. Now, you have a message that's on your heart that God gave to you. 
And the people who are listening to this right now need to hear this. Talk to us about taking those steps of faith. Yeah. Well, you know, as I was reading the book of Timothy or Second Timothy, and, and Paul is in like this, he, it's, it's almost like he's in, in this part in his life where he's understanding that his days are kind of ending and he's giving Timothy this advice. And a part of that advice, kind of what the whole book kind of comes down to is he's teaching Timothy to embrace the risks and tensions of following Jesus. Hmm. And, you know, I, I it just recently I read that, but throughout my life, I feel like God's always been teaching us that. He's always been teaching me that to, to embrace the things, the struggles, the, hard, the hardships of ministry, and um, to be able to take those risks and those steps of faith. I, I feel like Christianity becomes so boring when it's comfortable. You know, when, it, when, you're, when you're in it and it, nothing's difficult, there's no faith, it's just like this routine. I, I feel like that's when we can easily slip up and, and miss what God is doing. But to take those steps of faith, to take those risks, I think that, that is the excitement and the adventure of Christianity, of discipleship. We were in um, a thriving young adult ministry, my wife and I. We, we, uh, we were leading that ministry for five years. And I always had the heart to pastor. But I remember about three years into the ministry, um, and God, God moved there too. It grew. It was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Really, it was seeing people get changed and being, being in our church, having the, my pastor covering us. And, and there was a comfort in that. And I remember three years in, I began to pray and, and kind of tell God, like, hey, I'm good here. Like, I'm comfortable here. This, at the home church. Yeah, at the home church, running the young adult ministry. Um, we had people to help with the kids, babysit, so that was a plus too. But um, I remember telling the Lord, like, I'm good here. If I never go start a church, if we never go pastor, I know that's something that I felt called to do. But I almost thought, like, he was changing. He was trying to help me with perspective. And so I remember telling him that, like, I'm good. I'm good right here. I could, I could stay here. And around that time is when my pastor approached me and said, hey, I want you to consider moving to Texas and starting a church. He just dropped that on you. Yeah. It was something that we, we had went to visit. We really just went to visit to see our friends out there. And uh, when we came back, he said, you know, how did you feel about it? What do you think? Can you pray about going to start a church out there? And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much down for whatever at that point. How old like, are you at this point? Oh, geez, I don't know, man. Um, I don't remember. I'm, I think 26. 26. So you're young. Yeah, we are young, still young, but 26 years old, and uh, we had we had two kids, and it was we had a really comfortable life. I mean, it was it, it would have been very easy to stay. Well, you, I know this because you and I attended the same church. You were leading the young adult ministry. It was thriving. We had all our friends that we had grown mm -hmm. up with there. Our family was nearby. Your children were getting in all the children in the church. We, had a, we have a great pastor, and everything was just kind of comfortable in the perfect position. Yeah. And then that's when he comes to you and just says... And, and brings that challenge. And, and How did you feel in that moment? I felt excited. I didn't, I didn't think about the risk in that moment, honestly. I remember um, kind of just taking it to Jess and my wife and just saying, hey, you know, this is what Pastor Omar is asking us. What do you think? She's like, uh, we can't move out of California. Our, our, our house was literally, or our apartment was literally five minutes from our parents and five minutes from her mom. We were like in the perfect zone for babysitting and comfort. And it was, it was great. Um, so I told her that and it was like, man, she's, at first she was kind of, you know, we, don't, we can't do that, but we just, we prayed about it. And I remember um, praying about it, thinking of like, hey, what are we gonna do for a job? What are we gonna do for our living situation? And all this stuff was in question. All this stuff was, we didn't know where we would live. We didn't know what city we were gonna go to exactly. We just knew the Austin area. And, um, we just continued praying about it, and, and God would kind of speak to me here and there, but I remember this one specific time. We, every year, we'd have a young adult retreat, and man, the young adults that we were, they're, like, they're still our like, family. Like, we love them. We love them so much, and um, you know, seeing them get saved and God just moving their life, we'd, we never wanted to leave them. We never wanted to leave, and that, that was probably one of the hardest things to do, but I remember we were, we were at our young adult retreat. We were in the mountains. And, and, and the young adult retreat is when we the, all young, come together. the young adult yeah. group comes together, goes on. You guys Annually, would rent yeah. a cabin. Rent a cabin and just hang out, um, pursue God together. And I remember sitting in, in there and I was watching everybody kind of just, me, you know, you like kind of just have that perspective. Just watch everyone's mingling. Do. Yeah, you're almost like on the, on the outside looking in. And I remember looking around and seeing everybody and the Lord speaking to me like, you have to go you have to leave. You have to leave them. 
And I was just, I was just like, man, I, okay, like we'll do it, we'll do it because there there was there was a peace in knowing. I'll put it this way: the risk, the fact that there were risks involved, brought peace because I know that in the risk, God was going to come through, hmm. right? But it wasn't just the risk of like leaving. It wasn't just the risk of um, you know, saying bye to our friends and family. It was, it was the the risk of 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 am I even the right person to go, you know? And I think that was the that was probably the biggest battle was I can't do this, right? Because I know a lot of pastors and I, I you know, being around the ministry and being uh, around the conferences that we did and all that. I met a lot of pastors and and their backgrounds and their routines and the, the things they've done. It's like man, they're they're great men. And I remember thinking that's not me. Like, I'm not like that. I've, I've not written books. I've not, I, I didn't finish high school. Like, I didn't go to, I didn't go to uh, seminary. I didn't do any of that stuff. Um, and I remember thinking, like, I don't, I don't know if you're calling the right person, you know. And that was, that, I feel like that was the biggest risk is I'm going to go, we're going to go, I'm going to move my family, I'm going to move my kids, and we're going to go to the city where we only know one family. We didn't know anybody out there. I remember even when we had made the move, I don't know if I'm jumping too far ahead, but when, no. we, when we had made the move, we, we got there in March of 2018. We didn't launch till September or till April of 2019. So we had a, a, about a year, a little over a year. Of just preparation. Just preparation and, uh, you know, meeting people and stuff. And I remember a couple months in, we hadn't met, we hadn't met anybody um, that, was, that felt like, oh, yeah, you know, this is why we've come. Right, and I remember we didn't have any church services. There was nothing going on, and I remember being in my office, just like God, why did you bring us here? Hmm. Like we're by ourselves. It's lonely. Um, there's no church. I I still don't feel like you call the right person. Like there's there's no way that I I can do this. And God had we prayed about a, a timeline, and. Um, Everything in me wanted to go out of that timeline, but God kept saying, no, stick to this. I've, I've given you this plan. Stick to the plan. And as we were doing the plan, I was like, God, this isn't working. Like, What do you mean? It was taking too long? It, it was taking too long. We didn't feel like there was a ton of traction being, you know, we didn't feel like we were getting traction with people. Um, honestly, it was hard. We had, we had two babies, you know, we had two, two young kids that, that they're not in school. They're not in sports. They're not, you know, we're not meeting a lot of people. We're, you know, I'm working from home. And so... It was all those challenges, and I remember being so bothered, like, God, why are we even here? You know, like, why, why did you send us here? Why did you put us here? I don't feel like I'm the right person. But he kept giving me these visions of, of people being in our church worshiping and people um, being touched by, you know, our ministry and, and God moving through us. And that was the faith that just kept us going, was, okay, I, I may not feel like I'm qualified, and I may not feel like it's happening now, but I have faith to believe that it will happen, hmm. you know, and, and that faith is what kept us going. And, and it was like little steps of faith throughout on, on the journey, just like saying little yeses, right? Like, okay, God will go. Okay, God will give. I remember we didn't have any money for our church. We had, we had barely, any, like barely any money in our account, and the Lord told us to give it from our church account to a conference that has thousands of dollars, right? Like our, our gift was a, you know, drop in the bucket. But he told us to give. And I remember just little things like that um, throughout the season before we even launched. I would call baby churches that were launching w- alongside of us and say, hey, can we give you, we want to bless you. And we'd give them money that we're, we can't afford. And when you say baby churches, you're talking about churches that are just beginning, a just pioneer beginning, church. Yeah. And they're out there in the same season same you're stage, in. Yeah. And you are supporting them God too. God would tell, tell me, you need to give, you know, 500. Now, 500 to a, pl- a church plant is a lot of money. You know, that's our um, growth track books or that's our flyers or whatever, right? And he would tell me, like, you got to give these amounts and, and just little steps like that along the way up until, up until launch. And, and now we're, we're, beginning, we're beginning to see the fruits of that faith. So let's go back for a second. You've talked about the risk. You've talked about the doubt, including the self-doubt. Talk to me about the sacrifice, that, that tearing that, that had to take place, the things you had to give up, almost like Abraham where God says, just go out and I'll show you the land. Yeah, that, that, and that was, that was kind of the thing. Is like we had, before we can see what God was going to do, we had to let go of what He already had done. Hmm. You know, and and b- being in the young adult ministry, again, to mo- most people that may seem like, well, it's not a big deal. We invested our whole life into that. 
Like that was everything to us. It, you know, we treated it like it was, uh, you know, a huge, huge thing when it was small, and and that was everything. And we had to give that up. Really, um, as crazy as it sounds, we loved them so we loved them so much that I was worried about who would come after us and how they would treat the people in our ministry that that we we had been with for so long. And so that sacrifice of letting go, the sacrifices of, man, we had to take our kids away from their cousins. Like, you know, um, I still haven't met, uh, you know, my youngest niece, right? These kind of sacrifices of pulling away from family. Like we have to, hey guys, we're moving to Texas. I remember when, remember we sat down and I kind of announced it to the family. And it was just sad. Like, like it, was, it was a sad day because it's like, man, we knew this was coming, but we didn't think it was going to be out of state. We thought it was going to be another city. And I remember uh, Nani, our grandma, was like, well, we're all moving to Texas then. And, and sh- <laughs> but it didn't happen, obviously. And so there was that pulling of, of, of away from family. There was a pulling away from friends. That, that was our, like, security. Um, pulling away from our identity. Like, we knew everybody here. And they knew us. I can go to, you know, a ton of churches in the area, and I know people there um, that are really close friends. We're, we're leaving that. Nobody knows who we are. Nobody cares who we are in Texas. It, you know, you get what I'm saying? It was that, it was that, that sacrifice of family, sacrifice of friendship, sacrifice of, of identity and established, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, reputation, right? Like, hey, we're, we're gone. And then we're putting ourselves in this place. We don't even know anybody. It was, it was a huge sacrifice of just, of just letting go and letting go and not knowing if it's even going to work. Right, I think that's the hardest part. Like, if 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 God is like, "Hey, I already have this for you," you just have to go to it. That's an easy yes because you see it. But when God is saying, "You got to give this up now because I have something for you in the future," that's hard to say yes to. But that is the greatest blessing, right? And I think what we've learned in that sacrifice, in that risk, in that self doubt, is the greatest blessing of it all is that He walks with us. And I think that's been our constant encouragement is that we're not alone, you know, and, and he's, he's reassured us of that many times. And now you're seeing the fruit of it beginning to Now we're seeing the fruit sprout. of it, man. It's just, we have so many amazing people in our church. We have people that gotten saved and now are serving God in our church. And it's, it's, still, it's still that, God, I think you've got the wrong guy. Like, I, I, you know what it feels like? It feels like at some point, um, at some point it's been like, okay, we've got to put somebody else in here because it's beyond what I can do. But it's always been like that. And that is the beauty of what God calls us to do, is that it's, if, if what you're in is, is something that you feel qualified for, then where is God in it, hmm. right? How can, how can God be glorified in that? And that is the beauty of it. We're seeing God move in such a way that I'm like, man, God, you probably have to find somebody else pretty soon because this is incredible. And there are so many people who feel that way. Yeah. In fact, there's probably someone watching you right now who feels that way. Would you just look in that camera and encourage them? Absolutely. I think when I, when I was sitting down with my pastor, and, and I'm going to act like we're sitting at a coffee shop, we're just hanging out, right? And you're, you're, you're wondering if God called you. When I was sitting with my pastor, and I, I told him this, I said, one of the ways that I know that this is God calling me is because I feel like I can't do it. Because if I felt like I could do it, then it would, I feel like that would be me. But the fact that I feel like I'm stepping into something that I cannot accomplish, then I, I know that God is with me. So if you're feeling that call, you're feeling that urge to do something for the Lord, and you feel like it's beyond your capacity, it's beyond your strengths, then step in faith. That's where the faith comes in. The sacrifice, the risk, the tensions of following Christ, it's, it's all worth it. It's all worth paying that cost. Because at the end of the day, we are building the kingdom of God for His glory. We're, we're, it, we're, we're able to participate. We have the privilege of participating in the building of the kingdom and seeing souls saved. And that is the greatest blessing. That is, if you look at the life of Paul, what he did is he invested into people, all the risk, all the tension, all the suffering, all the persecution. At the end of the day, what was he doing is he was, he was pointing people to Christ. And that is, that is worth our risk. So don't let your self doubt keep you where you're at. Don't let the risk cause you to miss out on the blessing. Step into what God is calling you to do. Step in with big faith, with that adventurous spirit. Like, you know, God, I may not be able to do this by myself, but I know that I can do it because you're with me. 
And if you take that step of faith, I guarantee, I guarantee that God will bless that and you'll see fruit that you could not bear alone. It's only bared, it's only, you're only able to bear it because the spirit is leading you. So don't, don't let this stuff stop you. If, if I can do it, if I can do this, and I'm not just saying this lightly, I really firmly believe this, that if I can do what God is calling me to do, then you can definitely do what God is calling you to do. Would you pray with them? Of course. Father, I pray, God, for anybody watching right now, Lord, those that are struggling in their mindset, in their self-doubt, God, even those that are ashamed of sin, God, and the mistakes that they made, Lord, I pray that there'd be a covering over them. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would you would speak to their heart like that fire again. Lord, th those that have lost the passion, those that have, lo have, those that have lost the drive, and the burden to pursue your call, God, I pray you'd give it back to them. Lord, light the fire again, God. I pray, Lord, for that individual that's just on the verge of stepping out, God. I pray that he would jump over, that she would jump over into a faith move, God, into a step of faith to embrace the risk, to embrace the tension, to embrace the suffering, God, to embrace the things that come with following you because, Lord, we know that it is worth it. So I pray, God, give them big faith. Give them, uh, Lord, give them power. Give them your spirit so they can accomplish what you've called them to do in Jesus name and father I pray that the Holy Spirit I want you to stretch your hands toward mine right now let's believe that God's gonna stir that fire in you yes, God. father in the name of Jesus I pray the Holy Spirit would stir their faith stir that fire of faith Lord to where you become their sole focus let them step into the unknown, knowing only you. And I pray, God, you begin to speak to them clearly. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you agree. Say, amen. Amen. Well, Michael, you did an excellent job sharing, and I think your testimony really is going to encourage many different people. Now, we're going to tell them about Reclaim Media. I know we talked a little bit at the top of the program about it, but tell them again just a little bit about what Reclaim Media is. So Reclaim Media is, is weekly content that I pray and I believe is going to equip uh, leaders and pastors and, and believers to fulfill that destiny that we talked about, right? That, that God has called us to, to fulfill. Um, you know, when I, when I was called to do it, I didn't just jump into it in faith by, you know, I, I, think, I don't know if it sounds right, but in faith without preparation. Right, because sometimes I think we do that. But what I'm hoping is that this content is preparation for others to step out in faith, right? With some wisdom, with some guidance, with some practical guidelines. So I want to really encourage you to go and make sure you subscribe to the channel. You can go to reclaim.media. So like you would .com. So not reclaim.com or .org. It's actually .media. If you type that in reclaim.media, it's website. a website. So go to reclaim.media. You're going to see a link to the YouTube channel. You're going to see a link to the Instagram account. You're also going to see information on the church. If you are in the greater Austin area, they say a church alive is worth the drive. So make sure you make it down to Reclaim Church, pastored by Michael and Jessica Hernandez. Get down there. Check it out. We know you're going to love it. But if you're not in that area, the rest of us have Reclaim Media, which is online. So go. We're trying to get their channel some subscribers. Yep. And their channel is actually already growing. And we're pushing this thing because we know it's going to be a great, great tool that God uses to equip you, the people of God. Yeah. Well, Pastor Michael, thank Appreciate you so much it. for right. coming on to Encounter TV. And that is it for this edition of ETV Interviews here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more from Encounter TV, subscribe now. We have hundreds of videos, including worship clips and inspiring messages on topics like the Holy Spirit, healing, spiritual warfare, prayer, and more. We also have footage of the power of the Holy Spirit at work in our miracle services that we host all around the world, especially if you want to know more about and draw closer to the Holy Spirit. This is a channel I know you'll love. This is the Holy Spirit's channel, Encounter TV. Encounter the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.